Suddenly, Blue heard a beeping noise coming from his phone. He looked down quickly, then back up. Hey, why don't you two just take a walk down to the factory, said Blue. You can bond a little. It seems like you haven't spoken in a while. Nothing's more important than family and all that stuff, you know? Blue practically started pushing Orin out of the cart as the beeping sound continued. You two have fun now, said Blue, the words rushing from his mouth. Good luck with your job. Blue waited at the cart a few more moments until he was sure Orin and Sienna were out of sight, then answered his phone. We were able to finish early, said a voice on the other end. Your ship's all ready. We left it in the spot you ask. You can come get it whenever. Very good, said Blue. Thank you again. Blue put the phone away and breathed a sigh of relief. He was finally heading back home. Can I get a slice of toast? Asked a woman whom Blue hadn't seen approach. Yeah, of course, said Blue. He handed her a slice. In fact, just take it all. Blue continued handing the woman slices of toast until she couldn't hold any more. A few slices fell to the ground. Then Blue walked away. Blue made his way out to the field where the ship had been sitting for the past several days. He was glad to see it finally back in working order. He knew why 310 would be glad too. Blue decided it would be best to surprise Y310 and just show up at the factory with the ship. Blue could land the ship outside the factory doors, call Y310, and then when it came out, he would see the ship and then they could leave. It wouldn't even matter if anyone saw them because they were going home. Nothing here would be important once they were millions of miles away. Blue got into the ship and started pressing a few buttons. At the same time, he started calling Y310. Hey, buddy, said Blue. I'm right outside the factory. Stop whatever you're doing and come check this out. Blue pressed a few more buttons, and then he was practically teleported to the factory. You're here? asked Y310, the sound of shock in his voice. Now's not really a great time. Blue was confused as to what was so special about this moment that it wouldn't be a great time. But he was more confused when he saw Orin and Sienna sprinting out of the factory doors instead of Y310. What's going on? asked Blue. By now, Orin and Sienna had come to a halt next to the ship, understandably confused by its presence. They've got me, said Y310. They've got me. Go without. Y310's voice cut out. Blue exited the ship. Whoa, Blue, said Orin. Orin, said Blue. What's going on? Orin started stammering unintelligibly until Blue gave up on the cause. Never mind, said Blue. Just get in and let's go. What is this? asked Sienna, referring to the ship. You're way out of here, if you want it, said Blue. And based on the sound of the alarm in the factory, and the fact that you guys are running away from it, it looks like you might need it. There they are, said a few men, busting through the factory doors. Orin and Sienna boarded the ship, and after Blue pressed a few buttons, the ship took off, cruising at light speed through the universe. Where are we? asked Orin. Sort of the middle of nowhere now, said Blue, looking at some flashing dots on the control panel in front of him. When you're moving this fast, it's hard to say where you are. All I can really say is that we aren't yet where we will be. And where will we be? asked Sienna. Home, said Blue. My home, anyway. Does your home have a name? asked Sienna. Ryan, said Blue. Ryan? asked Sienna. Your home is called Ryan? That's the name of the planet, correct, said Blue. Is there a problem with that? I, I, I guess not, said Sienna. The ship landed down on Ryan and the trio disembarked. Blue took a small box with him and started walking down the street. Where are we going? 
asked Orin, hustling to catch up with Blue. What's going on here? I have a lot of questions. I have to deliver this package, said Blue. He glanced down at the package, reading some writing on it, and then continued down the street. My little detour on Earth set me back, so I want to get this to the location as soon as possible. Blue made his way up to a house, pressed a button, and within a few minutes, a man came up to the door. Package for Mr. Ryan, said Blue. The man took the box, immediately opened it, and ate the contents in two bites. Very good, said the man, then closed the door. And that's that, said Blue, and symbolically wiped his hands clean. That's all you came here to do, asked Orin. You didn't think my full-time job was selling toast on a stick, did you? I'm a delivery person. I deliver packages to people. But like, that was your only package to deliver, asked Orin. Only that one guy orders those cakes, and the cakes only come from a certain planet. So once every few months, Central Planning tells Y310 and I to head out to the other end of the universe to go pick one up. What is Central Planning? asked Sienna. Who is Y310? asked Orin. I have some time, said Blue. There's a nice restaurant nearby where we can discuss. So all the food here is free? asked Orin, looking over the menu. That's correct, said Blue. There's no money on this planet. What are these numbers then? asked Sienna. Those are how many are available. If it's zero, then you can't order it. If the number's two, then they have two you can order. And who decides how much to order if everything's free anyway, asked Sienna. Central planning, said Blue. Central planning tells everyone when to work, what to work on, what to buy, everything. We try to make everyone feel as equal as possible to create a real sense of community. That's why everyone here, including myself, is named Ryan. Although you may continue to call me Blue if you want, of course robots such as Y310 are excluded from the Ryan nomenclature. A robot came to the table to take everyone's order. Blue got his usual and watched as Orin and Sienna struggled to make up their minds, eventually each settling on the same thing. And robots do most of the work? asked Orin. That's correct, said Blue. I assist Y310 on occasional deliveries just to stave off boredom, but mostly robots do the work. I don't understand, said Sienna, leaning forward. How do you people get paid if they don't work? There's no money, said Blue, for probably the sixth time. He was noticing Sienna was having a real tough time grasping that concept. How do you buy things then, asked Sienna. It works the same as the restaurant, just on a bigger scale. Central planning tells us how much of a product is available. We tell them how much of that product we want, and then they deliver it to us. The more productive our robots are, the more is available. Sienna took a sip of water. So if there's... So if... So if there are 10 pairs of shoes available to you in a year, you might request seven and then central planning would deliver them just like that. That's right, said Blue. Who keeps the robots working, asked Orin. Who makes them? Blue laughed. I wish you had gotten a chance to meet Y310. If you had, then you'd know the robots don't need anyone to work on them or make them do anything. I mean, do you have robots on your planet to keep you working and continue producing you? No. The robots are intelligent enough to be self-sustaining, self-improving, and self-replicating. If a Ryan wants to help out the process, then they're welcome to do so, but it isn't necessary. Robots run the economy. The robots are the economy. We sit back, celebrate life, and enjoy what they give us. Sienna sat straight faced, but Orn was nodding slowly. Blue supposed they were both taking in the information in their own sorts of ways. Having robots do all the work really frees us Ryan's up to work on things like empathy and intelligence. Is that why you knew selling toast on a stick would work? asked Orn. Yes, said Blue. 
and how I knew you needed a job in the first place and how I figured Sienna must have given a loan to the banana factory and how I knew you guys were in trouble at the factory and how I knew a bunch of other stuff. What other things do you know? asked Sienna. Everything, said Blue. Orrin and Sienna took turns asking Blue various questions of increasing difficulty. Blue answered them all to the point where he could tell Orrin and Sienna were getting frustrated and began asking him questions they thought were unanswerable. A barber shaves only those who don't shave themselves, asked Sienna. Does he shave himself? Yes, said Blue without hesitation. That's simple. Blue proceeded to explain the logic behind the answer until Orrin and Sienna understood. What about this one, said Orrin. Can you travel back in time to kill your grandfather? Yes, said Blue, and again proceeded to explain with great clarity why it was a misconception that there was any paradox to begin with in that situation. Okay, said Orrin. The real question is, if you know so much, then tell me how can I see the birth of my daughter? You have to go back to your home, said Blue. But if I go back, won't they arrest me? asked Orrin. Blue hesitated. That I don't know. What I do know is that there's only one way to find out. Orrin nodded. All right, then let's go. Blue held up a finger. But first, let's eat. At that moment, the robot waiter came out with their food.